Olive Grummer here, and this is definitely attempt number one, not two. Um, I just finished reacting to One Piece chapter 909, Seppuku. Um, if you guys were in the live stream, as you can see, I can, I'm reacting to it live on Twitch. I could not pronounce it for the life of me. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this review. If you want to watch it live and tune in for the live discussion, make sure you add me on Twitch. Link will be in the description below, but let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, first, we see Marco and Nekomamushi talking, and I thought that was absolutely amazing because we are learning more about Whitebeard and his past, even though he's dead. He's passed away two years ago, timeline-wise. I mean, many, many years ago, actual timeline-wise. Uh, so it's just cool that we never know what Oda has in store for us. We're still learning things about... Uh, Whitebeard and the um, what is it the the war the payback war and that's just one of those things where I thought it was just absolutely cool to see hey we, we're still learning things from somebody who was such a powerful role in the One Piece world so I thought that was absolutely amazing <clears throat> to, to find out more about Whitebeard and uh, we find out that Marco is a doctor in his hometown I don't think they gave an actual name for the island, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no name for the island. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But it was cool to see that Marco is an a actual doctor as well. I didn't think his healing powers could heal others because typically when I think of a phoenix, I think of, you know, the bird blows up and then comes back out of the ashes to revive himself. So it's just one of those things where I did not expect him to be able to heal others. Which at the same time, if he can heal others, why the heck didn't he do that at the war? Now that I think about it, I didn't talk about that during my live reaction, but it just kind of clicked in my head. So, um, I don't know. I have no idea. That was... What the heck? But anyways, um, it's it's nice to see Marco repaying Whitebeard and treating his home island because we learned that the countries that cannot afford to pay the world government do not have association with them. So this can tie in with what the reverie was talking about when they were like hey yeah wano or no, no not the reverie the marines they were like yeah we can't we can't uh we can't enforce anything there because they're not associated with us they're not affiliated with us so maybe there's so much corruption which is what marco said that wano specifically cannot afford to pay uh, to pay the world government versus they choose not to. So that's another argument you got to think about as well. Are they choosing not to or do they? can they not afford it? So I'm, I'm kind of leaning they're choosing not to just because of how um, Kaido is taken over, etc., etc. Um, <clears throat> another thing we, ne we learn is that it's the resting place of Whitebeard and Ace. Awesome to see Shanks, Shanks know about where to bury them and just keep it keep it the way it is um one thing we got to think about as well is since marco's there where's jozu where's the rest of the whitebeard pirates we don't know that they're dead officially but we know we know they decided hey we got to return this favor all right what's what's going to happen next where are those guys maybe they'll help wano because we know marco can't join he needs to protect the island i really wish he could join because i mean dude i would love to see marco work with work with Luffy and the Straw Hats. That would have been amazing. But I guess at least we, we get to know about him and that he's doing well and he's taking care of those villagers in that village. Uh, another thing <clears throat> we need to talk, we learned about was the fact that uh, Bakken, the self-proclaimed mom of Whitebeard's son, not self-proclaimed uh, wife of Whitebeard, uh, mom of Whitebeard's son, she used to be on Whitebeard's, in Whitebeard's crew. They were on the same pirate ship together, but she wasn't under him. So maybe they got it on. I don't know. I don't. I I feel like, I feel like they didn't know to be honest with you because he's so young compared to her. So that was forty years ago. I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting, to see what that's going on. But they also know that, um, homeboy is gonna gonna come and probably wreck that village anytime soon so we just gotta we gotta be on the lookout for weevil what's he gonna do i'm very excited to see him soon uh because they brought him up again and then another thing about the um 
Weevil and kind of the backstory on that. Before even Weevil came into the picture, we know about the uh, payback war. Something I wanted to bring up was how Marco said that white, not Whitebeard, Blackbeard tried to take over the island or something like that. So I wanted to, um, I, I had a theory that the Gorosei initiated the payback war. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a theory video or something like that a little bit later. And I'm starting to doubt my theory just because of the fact that Marco was like, hey, no, he tried to take over this island, which makes me think the island was safe. So I don't know if they actually lost or, well, they said they lost, but was it really a loss, you know? Because um, the end goal was to keep keep the island safe. Another thing, we finally see Wano Country for the first time. We saw kind of, we saw Kaido here and there, but we actually get to see the country in itself, which I thought was was beautifully drawn. Oda and the illustrators and the artists did an absolutely amazing, amazing, um, <clears throat> amazing portrait of how Wano Kuni is uh, drawn and portrayed, and absolutely fantastic. We also see that the Straw Hats are undercover. I didn't think they would be, but then I, two pages into once they got into one, I was like, oh, they're undercover here. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen, but I guess that makes sense. I wonder how long they've been there for. It's Yeah, it is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I wonder how, how long they've been there to be able to have jobs, uh, stuff like just blend in. So that's kind of interesting as well. Now, another thing is that... Oh, I did forget to mention that Marco has a message for Luffy, and I really wanted to know what that message is, so we'll, we'll find out soon. <clears throat> so we find out the name of the Shogun. His name is Kurozumi Orochi. Now, he, I saw a similar resemblance to the um, uh, Celestial Dragons when they get touched, Obviously, the admirals come in. So when the uh, shogun comes in, they get touched. Kaido's going to find out. So I found some similarities there. I was like, ah, okay. All right, Oda. I see what you're doing. Because he does like looping things around and bringing in the same concept somewhere else. So I thought that was really cool to see. Uh, Frankie, Usopp, Robin, Zoro are all there. As anime said, I was reading it on my cheat sheet as you type that. And we see that the ninja and the samurai are there as well. <clears throat> um, so we've got Frankie. Uh, Frankie's a carpenter. Zoro, Usopp's a salesman, obviously, selling. And Robin is a geisha. And respectively, while Zoro poses as a ronin. Okay, so this part was dope. Everyone's A lot of people are talking about Zoro, but I still think there are a lot of other things we need to talk about as well. I love that Zoro's back. Zoro's one of my favorite characters of all time. Uh, I am Zoro fanboy. You know, I'm not fanboying him, but he's on my favorite characters list. Uh, so I was really excited to see him join as well. So the main, the Magistrat frames Zoro for murder and theft and then takes the sword for himself oh okay so that's what was happening Zoro was getting framed got it uh <clears throat> so then what ended up happening was Zoro was like no you're the one that did it you smell like blood and then he cuts dude he cuts the dude and then the building behind him with a seppoku knife which is probably like what this big compared to a sword that's like god knows how big you know so it was amazing to see how strong Zoro is just with that tiny little blade. I thought that was that was amazing. Uh such an incident incident by attacking them with the with the knife. Yep, exactly. So this is the first chapter of the Wano arc. I'm super, super, super excited we finally get to see what goes on there. But I do hate the fact that we didn't finish the reverie. It was much much shorter than what I thought it would be, to be honest with you guys. I thought the reverie would maybe have been a few months. Because that's only like seven, eight chapters, maybe even six, you know, takes a break at the beginning of the month and then at the end of the month, uh, the end of the other month, that's only six weeks. So that's six chapters. So um, I didn't expect it to be that short. I knew it was short, but I mean, two months is only eight chapters, which really isn't that much if you think about it. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, I'm just excited for all of, all of Wano now. We finally get to see the group meet back up together. I can't wait to see Zoro's bounty increase. Because, um, 
because Sanji's increased and I want Zoro's to be higher than Sanji's just because he's the right hand man. Um, it's called Tanto, but you could also Wakazashi to Seppuku too. Oh, okay, got you, got you. Names. I'm learning, I'm learning. But overall, what am I going to rate this chapter? Honestly, it was a solid B. Um, it was a lot of revelation, not enough action in my opinion, but, you know, it's just my personal opinion. But the stuff we learned is A, quality material off of Whitebeard, uh, Blackbeard, Marco, Nekomamushi, even what Shanks did, where he planted the graves. I mean, all that stuff was absolutely awesome. And then the very last panel, I'm sorry, Kianamon. Boom, Zoro killed them. Uh, it was A quality material, B, B, B overall chapter, if that makes sense. I don't know how you can add that up, but hey, we're going average here. So um, overall, I'll just give it a B. I, honestly, just a, a mid B. It was an 85, 80, mid to higher, mid B, 85 uh, to 87. It was just one of those things. I'll give it a D for delightful. There you go. I, almost, I thought that said Dellinger, but we're past Dressrosa. D for Dressrosa. Uh, I wish there was more action, but Oda wanted us to be in Wano. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. I'll live stream for a couple more minutes after this just to talk to you guys. If you haven't uh, followed me on Twitch, go ahead and follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description below or just look up Olive Grummer. Nothing new. Um, and I think that hits all the main points. Looking forward, I know there are a lot of things we need to look forward to in Wano, but that will be a separate video in itself, things to look forward to. Um, so I think other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this review, and we'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the new approach, and this is, again, take two, so I don't know what I said in the beginning. Anyways, guys, see you later.